Hey guys, how you doing today? I have here Jordan uh, Kravitz from Lana MMA. And uh, today, you know, as we promoted on Facebook, I wanted to introduce him. Um, we're going to be talking today a little bit about how he transformed with the pandemic and, you know, how it affected his business and, you know, what he did to uh, create a great new brand called 1MR, One More Round, which I find amazing. And I wanted to, you know, touch a little bit more on what brought out that creativity. How you doing, Jordan, today? Good, good, very good, thank you, how you doing? Good, good, thank you, good, good, great to have you here and thank you so much for joining. Um, I just wanted to get a little bit of insight on, um, you know, let me take it back a year, you know, when they closed all the gyms and you heard this news and, you know, everything was a big shock. Um, what did you first, like, what did you first feel when this all happened? How did that affect you? And we're going to talk from a mental state, right? Like, how did it affect you and your business? And how did it physically affect, you know, your business and people coming in? Totally. Um, I mean, like, like most people, I at first, I didn't anticipate whatsoever how long this was going to be. And I think that that's uh, something that almost everyone can share. So at first, you know, it was kind of like, okay, we're going to close for two weeks and you know, we'll probably be back open, things will be back to normal, you know, let's go from there. So at first I really wasn't panicking much. Um, it was kind of like, okay, let's take two weeks to kind of breathe, you know, a nice little two weeks of patience. Um, but then as kind of myself and everyone realized, okay, this is, this is gonna be more than two weeks. This is a lot more than we thought. It was, um, the best way to put it is just scary. Um, mm. Just because, of all industries, especially of all industries affected, um, gym's one of the number one, right? Especially yeah. when you're dealing with a virus where it's uh, aerosols, right? So mm -hmm. my first reaction was that of a bit of fear, um, but decided to kind of, okay, let's assess, let's, um, let's take a look at how we can change operations a bit and let's take a look at how we can approach that. Um, we didn't mm -hmm. want to rush into things, wanted to kind of watch and see how everything unfolds a bit. Um, but within about, you know, about a month, month and a half, um, we decided, okay, it's time to pivot our operations a bit. We can't just stand back and wait for all this to be over because who knows when it's going to be over. Um, let's start the pivot. I see. So now when we talk about the pivoting or the transforming or rolling with it, at first I know a lot of gym owners ended up, you know, saying, hey, you know what, this is temporary and it'll be over soon. And then you're saying in about a, a month or so, it started to settle in like, hey, you know what, I probably have to do something about this, I'm assuming, right? That's you it, know? exactly. You know, I at see. first it was kind of just like, okay, you know what, let's offer, let's offer free Instagram classes. Let's just mm. give something out to the community. You know, let's make sure it's a, it's a tough time. There's a little bit of uncertainty. Let's just give them something to fill the time. You know, let's keep the community together. Let's make sure that everyone's staying positive and everyone still has something familiar. Because I yeah. think it's always tough when you kind of lose everything that's familiar. And, um, you know, kind of watch what happens. But within, yeah. um, within about a month, month and a half, we realized, okay, it's not going to be so simple as just, Hey, offering free Instagram mm. classes. We've got to now start adapting and changing up some of our systems to, yeah. um, I hate this word, but to fit this new normal. Yeah. 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 I, it, I uh, mean, I think we're all sick of that term by now. <laughs> definitely for sure. That new normal, it's, it's, but it is what it is, right? I mean, it we, is what it is, right? we're, we're transforming and, you know, we're learning, but as an entrepreneur, um, the first emotion that came in was fear. And the fear obviously is, you know, you run a person to person business, brick and mortar, you have a landlord, you have, uh, you know, bills to take care of heat, you know, and, and, and nobody's really that forgiving because they're also feeling a hit at that time. Um, now offering the free classes is great. And I understand that that made, you know, a temporary solution. What made you like, what what did you decide financially how how are you going to find other revenue at that time like what were you what was your thoughts you know yeah. in terms of 
how do I make money in this time? Because at the end of the day, that's what the business's purpose is, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, and that was kind of, and that's kind of what we realized after a little bit, you know, after the, once we realized that this was going to be a little bit longer than we thought, realized, mm. okay, we've got to now, um, like you said, create a sustainable system out of that. Because offering free classes on Instagram is nice and it's great for the community, but it's not sustainable as a business, right? Yeah. Um, like you said, there comes a point where you have to start earning income and you have to start being able to support the business. Um, That's right. So, you know, it was a lot of brainstorming at how can we transition our system, um, but still keep our quality intact and still mm -hmm. keep um, the essence of Muay Thai and boxing and kickboxing intact. And, you know, the simple solution was, well, just do everything in the air at home. But I wasn't, I wasn't satisfied with that solution because um, I know we, we discussed this the other day. Um, impact and contact is what makes boxing and Muay Thai and kickboxing what it is. You yeah. know, a lot of the time people go to boxing and Muay Thai to hit the bags and hit the pads and people want the impact. And that's often, I know, um, I know some, I know often students coming to train, that's one of, and that are coming from some more traditional martial arts. Um, mm. That's often what they're looking for is to be yeah. hitting the bags, really, you know, really hitting the pads, really get that contact, not person to person contact, but impact in the head. Um, so the obvious solution was, okay, have everyone get a punching bag. Um, but as we know, hanging punching bags, very few people can put those in their house, right? Yep. Um, unless you've got a garage, especially in the GTA, um, lots of people in smaller spaces. Um, so we decided, okay, we need a freestanding punching bag. Um, and that it's really a freestanding punching bag that's going to allow us to stimulate our endeavors in the gym at home. Um, the problem there was, where do we get a freestanding punching bag? that's suitable for the type of power and the type of hits that we do in Muay Thai, boxing, kickboxing. Mm -hmm. um, because we've all seen there's tons of freestanding bags on the market, but not too many that can really withstand that sort of power. So yeah. that's where we got to, okay, let's start manufacturing our own punching bag. Mm -hmm. So um, we decided to set up manufacturing and um, Wow, was that ever tough? <laughs> was that ever a long <laughs> process? Um, especially setting up manufacturing overseas during a global pandemic. Yeah. When, um, the entire world is hit by the pandemic at the same time, and the entire yeah. world is opening at the same time. Yeah. Wow, was it ever a tougher endeavor than we thought? Um, but can't we, imagine. We got. We were able to open up manufacturing and get punching freestanding punching bags um, designed to the specs that we thought would be best to complement our style of training. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously throughout that was the whole experience of going back and forth. No, this isn't right. This isn't right. This isn't right. Um, you know, changing up the models, um, all the learning and the experience with um, uh, manufacturing overseas. Um, all the um, all the issues that I'm sure everyone knows about, um, all the supply chain issues that have been happening yeah. out of China. Yeah, that's a big and thing. Also yeah. out of um, all the shipping issues that have been happening. Um, not only is there lots of issues with the supply chain, but lots of issues with shipping. Um, so it it proved to be um, a much much tougher endeavor than we thought, but it um, we came out of it about three four months later with an absolutely awesome bag. Wow, that's amazing. And so once we had the bag, we were able to really couple the program, you know? Yeah. And our whole idea was establishing, um, I mean, everyone knows Peloton, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The whole idea of Peloton is feel like you're in the studio in your living room. That yeah. was the whole idea with this, is feeling like you're in the studio in your living room and doing so, creating creating a piece of equipment that people can use that they're confident was designed by us to meet the specifications of our team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Designed by, you know, real Muay Thai fighters, right? Exactly. I mean, exactly. I know that's a big yeah. issue. I know, like, I'm, I'm sure you experienced this with your gym, but all the time I'm dealing with um, 
suppliers who just aren't aren't involved with the Muay Thai community and don't really yeah. have the insight into what Muay Thai practitioners need. And, yeah. you know, the amount of Thai pads I've gotten that have broken on us, punching oh, yeah. bags that were too soft. It's just, yeah. it, it, it's really important um, to exactly be able to um, have someone who understands your field. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, if, if a fighter can use it, then the common person is going to have the durability too, right? So well, and that's exactly it. That's the test, right? The test yeah. is the fighter. And if yeah. the fighter can use it, I mean, anyone can use it. That's know? right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Now, I also use your bag and, you know, because I don't have anywhere to hang a bag. So it was a, it was a real solution because the bags on the market right now, they don't have anything durable. Like there's nothing durable. And I'm not like, I'm 50 years old. I don't hit that hard. But I mean, even any anyone hitting those other bags, they just don't last. They leak. No, they, they have don't. issues, right? And it's it's honestly, it's been it's funny how much it's um, like when we when we first started selling them, it's amazing how much people were fighting with us. Like yeah. before even seeing them, like no, freestanding bags aren't good. No, I'm gonna yeah. knock this down. No, this can't stand up to my power. And all yeah. I like all I said was just come by the gym, try it out. Come yeah. by the gym, try it out. <laughs> And literally, time and time again, it was like, it was like I was saying, uh, I was saying to my fiance, like we need to make a reality reality show on it. Like yeah. they come, they hit the bag, and they're blown away. They're like, wow, this yeah, is exactly it's unbelievable. What you said, and I'm like, yeah, it's, yeah, that's why I said it. <laughs> I I totally agree. Like I I love that bag. It's the best bag I've had. Best freestanding bag. Yeah. And um, yeah. you know what? It's very durable. In fact, it's it's actually a little bit hard at times, you yeah, know? Like, exactly. So you get it that is, little conditioning too. Until you work it in, it is actually, I'm not sure if you saw the, um, we had um, we had on uh, on Instagram, we had um, Hassan, who's uh, WBC Canada. And, oh, I uh, saw that, yeah. He fight yep. champion. Yep. He, was, uh, he was boxing the crap out of it and he couldn't knock it over. And it's, uh, yeah. you know, I've got, I've got videos of, uh, my 240 pound heavyweight hitting the crap out of it can't knock yeah. it over. And it's, it's awesome. um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really proud of um, what we've come to develop because yeah. it, it, it was definitely not easy. You know, mm -hmm. it was so much back and forth. Yeah. Um, you know, anyone who's ever designed a product knows you never get it right the first time. You know, yeah. it's, um, it's a lot of, uh, let's call it, reinvestment and break evens you know just yeah. to get that perfect product but um it's it, it's been really nice and really special the amount of messages that i've gotten from um from gym owners and from practitioners who have just um pretty much told me that like this bag has saved their life throughout the quarantine that this wow. bag was just exactly what they need that muay thai or boxing or kickboxing is such a like such an important yeah. part of their life and how much yeah. they've been feeling not having it during the quarantine and how just getting a bag like this, you know, it's just that that little bit of familiarity that they need. Yeah. Know, the tool, yeah. You know, nothing's ever gonna replace a hanging bag. You know, but For I, sure. I really think with this we've gotten the closest that uh, that we can. Yeah. Oh definitely. That's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. I love it. The, now Sorry, go ahead. The devil, the devil is in the details. The devil is yeah. in the details. And that's really what I realized designing it is whereas at first I was like, okay, this is the key spec. I quickly realized it's not about that one key spec, but about those 40 little key specs. Little details, yeah. Yep. Create yep. that, you know, perfect experience on the back. Yeah, yeah. And I can see it there in the back. It's got, um, you know, the targets on it as well. And yep. then it's also got the other side with the branding. Now, the idea for the branding now, one more round, that's yep. that's that's pretty cool. Does that mean something to you with this whole pandemic? Or is it like, where did that so come from? Me, yeah, so to me, it's been, where do I start? Where do I start? Um, I mean, everyone knows the classic Rocky quote, one more round. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I think it's one of the greatest quotes about this, it is. you know, pushing, yeah. pushing through, you know, never stopping and you yeah. know, having that tenacity, you know, everyone's been at a fight where it's, it's just a banger and you know, the, and the whole crowd just wants to see one more round, yeah. one more so round, true. you know, yeah. um, 
you know, everyone's been, well, not everyone's been there, but, you know, every fighter's been there in training camp, you know, yeah. uh, where they're dead and they want to quit. And it's just the coach, you know, one more round, just that push. Push, yeah. Um, and I think that, I think that it's also, you know, a lot of the, right now with like Corona and with the quarantine and, yeah. and with the lockdown, it's that, okay, one more round. That's just, push. Yeah. we're almost there, you know? And I yeah. think that, that to me, that term of one more round just has so much significance. It I really think does. That right yeah. in, right in the name, you feel so much from it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you it, do. It explains in that one one more round. It explains the resiliency and the don't quit mentality. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we thought it was a great. We thought it was really, really good branding for it. And, yeah. And. Um, where that evolved was actually into a total um, branding change of our gym, um, okay. where we decided to actually step away from Lana MMA and um, brand our gym as one more round. So we've actually wow. officially okay. done, um, done an official name change. Oh, and, I didn't know uh, that. We're okay. no longer going by Lana MMA or Lana Muay Thai Canada, which we previously were. But now yeah. going by uh, one more round. Wow, that's a and big change. Tag, wow. It's a very big change. And our tagline on it, um, if you'll see one more round, train like a fighter. Yeah. And that's what that's what the brand is all about, is training like a fighter. So what is a fighter? You know, I'm a big believer, like, you know, I, I know we we always have chats and um, I know, I know you always love, I always have a way of always getting into a fight metaphor. Oh, yeah, always. You know? <laughs> it's the coach in you. Have, right? Yeah. And um, I think that one of the biggest metaphors that we use in life is life being a fight. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, that's another Rocky quote right there. Yeah. Right? Life being a fight. And yeah. It's not about how hard you get hit, but how, you, know, you, how come back. you get hit yeah. and keep yeah. moving forward. Yeah, and I think that there's so many, um, so many concepts and so many parallels between fighting and between life. Yeah, and so for us, the whole train like a fighter has it's twofold. One, obviously, you know, Muay Thai, kickboxing, boxing. Um, when you compete, you're fighting, and it's one of the best workouts around. So you can train like a fighter without actually being a fighter, you know yeah. what I mean? And, you know, you own a gym, you know how it is. We'll have, for every 99 people who walk through the door, maybe one will become a fighter, yeah. maybe one. Yeah. But all 99 of those other people will change their lives through martial arts. Yeah, 100%. And will benefit through martial arts. For sure, yeah. And even if it's just at the very minimum being getting in better shape. Yeah. So at the end of the day, first off, fighters, as far as I'm concerned, are some of the fittest athletes in the world. For and sure, yeah. Can benefit physically by training like a fighter. Even yeah. Just the self defense and stuff. But to me, it's so much more than just the physical of actual fighting. For me, it's, and part of the branding that we have with the one more round is very much um, fighting as a mindset. Hmm. And that when I say train like a fighter, what I mean is training with the mindset of a fighter, hmm. training with that same mindset that go one more round mindset. Yes, that yes, mindset makes sense. where when I'm down and out, I'm not going to stop. You know, that yeah. mindset where when I'm tired, I'm not going to quit. Mm. And I think that the fighter's mindset is one of the, um, one of the most impressive things of a fighter. You know what Very I mean? much so, yeah. Um, and I know we always talk about as coaches, you know, and we tell our fighters like, look, if you can succeed in Muay Thai or you can succeed in kickboxing, you're going to succeed in every area of your life. Yeah, you exactly. Know? And that these yeah. skills that you learn are skills that are going to benefit you in every area of your life. Now, we yeah. don't mean that you're going to go and punch your boss, but we mean exactly. that you're going to feel that fighter mentality. <laughs> yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? We don't know that so you're going to have to, yeah. you know, yeah, you're not going to have to self defend yourself against your boss. Sure. Hopefully not. Yeah, but yeah, you know, exactly. That hopefully not. Yeah. Right, exactly. And that honestly, as you've easy. seen, you know, as you've seen over the years, I'm sure like most people, you know, they might have gone into fights before and they come in and train at Atlanta or any of the gyms and they, you know, they don't get into fights anymore, right? Like, exactly. I mean, you know, and, and, and as you said, if if you have the average person training like a fighter and it's all about mindset, 
isn't that kind of, you know, in essence, what Lana, what you, what you brought to the gym for years? Isn't oh, yeah. that what you brought to your students? And you're just kind of, would, would it be safe for me to say that you're packaging it into this so that you can hit maybe a broader market? Is that, that's is exactly that kind of the it. idea? That's exactly okay. it. And I also, see. I, I think that's a great way of putting it. I couldn't have put that better. And also realizing too that through over my years of coaching and, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure this is something that you can probably relate to, you know, in your, in your earlier years of coaching, you're very much about, oh, I want to produce savages. I want to, you know, make the best fighters that can yeah. be. I want yeah. to send this guy to the UFC. I want this guy to go to glory. But as I find, as I get older and more mature as a coach, it's not about, I mean, as much as I love coaching the fighters and as much as I love working with fighters, it's not all about the fight. It's No, like definitely said, not. It's all about the, you know, Joe and John and Dave and the mother of two who we can yep. change yep. their life. That's right. Through teaching them these skills, you know. And That's then, right. You know, the person who you know, has never had self-confidence and now they've lost 10 pounds and they have a sense of community and every yep. time they walk in, everyone's giving them props and giving them high yeah. fives and they have nicknames and now they finally feel a sense of worth. Yeah. And for me, that's really, um, post-pandemic, what I want to focus on yeah. is really taking all these systems that I've learned and taking all of my coaching skills and really taking my, all the skills that I've learned of working with people and being able to change the regular everyday person's life, you know, See, that's still huge. My fighters yeah. still have, you know, some high quality fighters because that's where, that's where my passion, that's where my passion stems from. And that's yeah. where it all came out of. That's my root. Yeah. But really understanding that that's not the primary objective of my business anymore. You know, yeah, the primary makes sense. objective of my business is to, is to change life through martial arts and package. Sometimes when you're a little bit too fighter oriented, you actually package it in a way where it's intimidating to the regular person. Very and much so. It kind of impedes yeah. you from being able to just touch the regular person. Yeah. And that when you're able to package it in a little bit more of a recreational manner, um, it's not as intimidating and you're able mm -hmm. to, um, you're able to attract the recreational types a lot more. That's and amazing. That, you know, always real will recognize real and, you know, the fighters will know a good coach and, you know, I yeah. think that the fighter program will always be there and will always be strong. And, uh, you know, that's in my blood so that I can't, yeah. uh, you know, you I can't can shake it if you out. wanted to. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. But, yeah. you know, also, um, also during the pandemic, having the fights being taken away from me a little bit where I can't travel yeah. the fighters and can't, yeah. can't, you know, promote, I actually had, I had a show scheduled, um, the week after the lockdown hit, um, I had a mm -hmm. show scheduled March 25th that I, had that's right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but also it made me realize that, you know, it made me start thinking about life beyond the fight, mm -hmm. you know, which is maybe something that is something I always would have got into, but maybe something that the pandemic led me to a little bit earlier. I see. So yeah. you're saying that this is something you would have probably done years later, but, um, you mentioned something, you mentioned something very interesting on a call we had last week, and it was about working, um, you know, getting the chance now that if this had never happened, you would have probably never created this amazing brand. You would have probably never transformed or, or created this new, this new direction, right? Um, and you also mentioned a term which I've heard before, but I mean, you, the way you mentioned it was really cool. You worked on wor working on your business rather than in it. Did you oh, find, yeah. like, could, could you elaborate a oh, little bit yeah. more on I think that? that that's, I think that that's really the, I think the nail on the head of where the mindset change came and where, um, where you kind of, you know, you take your lemons and you make some lemonade out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I think as business owners and especially as business owners who are also business operators, because I think that's one thing in the martial arts, which is very unique, is most business owners are also the primary operator of their business. Yeah. It's so easy to get lost in your business. And it's so easy to get lost in the day-to-day -day of your business. I know I was, I've been for the past, 
you know, six years lost in the day to day of, you know, holding pads for your fighters, scheduling your fights, you know, um, you know, business as usual. Mm -hmm. And um, not often are we ever given the opportunity to step back and work on our business. Mm. And I mean, when else in life would we be given the opportunity where someone's going to say, you know what? Take a break from working in your business. No one's going to judge you from it for, from it because of it, because everyone's business is going to be closed. Yeah, exactly. And let's take this next year. You know, you've been owning a business. I've, I've owned Lana for six years and um, not a lot of people know this, but I also worked at Lana for seven years prior to that. Oh, wow. Uh, under the okay. old owner. So I've been involved with um, the organization for 13 years. Oh, and, wow. um, long time. When else would you, after 13 years of operation, be given the opportunity to step back from operation, take all the lessons that you've learned in those 13 years and really, really work on your business? Yeah. You know? and well said. What I, well said. Right? And that's what yeah. I decided to take the opportunity to do, to work mm. on my business. And it all started with, I mean, I was forced to work on the business by having to adapt this online system. Mm. But you know how it is. I, I know I made the comparison the other day. It's like if I have a house and it's like a very mediocre looking house, you know, it's, whatever, yeah. it's a mediocre looking house. It does the trick. Well, if I now go and I renovate my kitchen and my kitchen looks beautiful, uh, the rest of the house is going to look like shit, you know, and everyone's going to look at the rest of the place and be like, no one's going to look at how good your kitchen is. Everyone's yeah, they're not. Bad the rest of the place is. Very and true. That's, Very that's true. exactly what happened is, you know, we, yeah. we, we, were, we were forced to work on one system and really, 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 really build that system up as much as we can. But working on that system forced us to revamp other systems. I and see. That every, and any business owner and operator, you know, we all know that every system is integrated. No system is its own soul. So also when working on that one system, we had to, oh, well, what about how this applies to this system? Mm. And that applies to that system. And the way I compare it is it's like a circuit board where, you know, if you have 40 circuits on the board and one circuit goes out, well, it could take out the whole circuit board. Mm. But everyone is dependent on the other one. So it allowed us to revamp, evaluate, and really, really better and change every system in the business. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, it was a very exciting process. It almost felt like we were almost like starting a new business, you know? Wow. And, yeah. um, it's um, back to the back to the working back to the working on the business. Um, I was just saying it's. Um, I, I think that that's something that isn't talked about enough. Yeah, that's, you're right. That's the yeah. true investment. That's the true power of investment. You mm. know that yes, operations is what's going to bring in your income, and operations is what's going to make you your money. Yeah. But it's working on your business and working on your systems that's investing in those operations. That's making sure that when you go back into yeah. operations, yeah. you're able to do it a lot better. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And, and taking, taking understanding that there's going to be a short-term loss sometimes in order mm. for a long-term gain. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's important right there. And, and, um, you know, that, that you are going to kind of, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe take a couple steps back, right. You're saying, yeah. and then, and then in the long run, it'll all pay off. Right. Now that analogy about the circuit board was, it's, it's amazing because it kind of makes sense. You've got all these little systems all over the place. And then I guess the circuit board lines them all up, right. Um, yeah. kind of brings them all together if I'm not mistaken. And exactly. I guess uh, what, 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 what you just said, you know, 13 years experience, seven years working, six years running operations, then having the break. Now, what, what advice would you have for newer entrepreneurs? You know, they might have only been open for a year or two years, maybe three years, you know, and they haven't had your work experience either. And now they shut down and they decided to, 
you know, keep going through this and keep working. What advice would you have for them? I mean, it's now a year into it and it, it looks like it's, it looks like it's going to be a bit longer if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Right. Can they, can they still do it? They didn't do anything over the last year. What can they do now? What would you, what totally. would you recommend? I think, I think it's never too late. And I actually think now is the time because now it's now, you know, vaccinated people are getting vaccinated. Um, you know, I, I think rates are 25% lower this week than they were last week. The mm. end is in, the end is in sight. The end is on the horizon, right? You look to um, countries which started vaccinating their population a little bit earlier than us, and they're back open. Everything's yeah. open 100%. Yeah. You know, um, I point to Israel, um, who has, I think, close to 100% vaccination rate right now, and they're totally open. Completely um, open, yep. Yeah. Everyone That's right. enjoying life as they knew pre-pandemic. Wow. So I totally get it, you know. Uh, so much of it's about mindset. And a lot of this stuff, you know, I, I totally get it. If there's someone watching it, well, easier said than done. You know, yeah. I totally get that. It's been a tough time, you know, and sometimes it's tough to be positive and it's tough to kind of see, uh, make lemonade with lemons, you know, during a time like that where, you know, especially if you're a newer business and you never even really got the, yeah. the opportunity to experience the success because yeah. success doesn't come overnight, right? It takes time. So I totally get that. And by no means do I, do I want this to ever come across as diminishing anyone else's will or anything, or as saying that because you weren't able to work on your business this time, or maybe, maybe it put you into a depression, or maybe you were really down where you just couldn't do it. There's no need to feel bad about that because we're also, we're all our own people and we all have different motivations and also too, we're all in different folks. So I yeah. think that's the first kind of disclaimer is it's, I don't think anyone should feel bad if they haven't been doing that because mm. I can't blame you. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm also saying this as 13 years experience, like we said, you know, if I had just opened up a gym and been at it for a year, can I say I'd approach it with the same mindset? I would like to think I would, but I probably wouldn't. And that's yeah. also one of the lessons that I've learned throughout the years. Yeah. But um, before I go on a tangent, um, so first off, anyone who's just stuck it out, like if you still, if you still have your gym, kudos. Like yeah. you're doing better than I think most average people. For sure. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. If you had to give up your gym and you plan on going back at it when the pandemic's over, kudos. Because yeah. that's a tremendous amount of resiliency. And that's the definition yeah. of mind fighter of a mindset. You get knocked that's down right. and you get back up. That's you right. Know? And if, you know, maybe this experience has broken you as a business owner and you've decided mm -hmm. to get out of business. Yeah. Well, that's your, who are is anyone else to judge your personal experience? Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's so right. That's to first, each their own. You know, yeah. The yeah. Thing. To each their own. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And, um, but what I would say is to someone in that position, you know, let's say one year, maybe they owned a gym, they never really got to experience much success. And they're also looking and they're like, well, I'm still a new gym owner. I was still learning. Yeah. How am I supposed to yeah. reach out? Like one thing that's amazing about the Muay Thai community is everyone's so open and there's Definitely. some amazing leaders and coaches and mentors yeah. in this community and I can very proudly say that you know six years as a business owner um also running um a promotion where I ran five big shows oh yeah great I shows with, yeah you know lots of most of the coaches and gym owners in the community they're all mm -hmm. amazing like, yeah they're, they're all, all great so people willing to help. yeah they're yeah. all amazing when I was a new like when I was a new promoter everyone was offering help you know when I took over Lana is a new business owner. Everyone was off. Yeah. So yeah. that's my first thing is reach out, you know, yeah. find, find the style that you like. Cause I might not be your style. You know, that's the beautiful yeah. thing about martial arts too, is everyone has their own style. That's right. Find the gym owner whose style you like, find the coach whose style you like, reach out to them. Yeah. Talk to them, yeah. You know, and I'm sure they'll be totally open with you and very willing to provide that advice. Um, that's great. That's great advice. Community. 
um, not only mentors, but, you know, because sometimes the mentor relationship is a little bit of a different type of relationship. Yeah. But create a community where it's just, you know, people bounce ideas off of each other. Yeah. Hey, I've been doing this. Have you tried doing that? Yeah, let me try that. Have you tried doing this? And um, I think there's so much value in that. Oh, um, definitely. Also, too, I would say to um, one thing that I find not enough business owners in the martial arts community do is look to business owners outside of the martial arts community and talk to them about Huge. what they're doing. Yeah. Because sometimes in a certain community or a certain niche, we're so focused on one thing or we've got our head so much in one area or we do yeah. things a certain way and we don't even know yeah. why we do things that way. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes nice to reach out to other business owners and see what they're doing. And business is business. Like yeah. if you're, if you're, if you're growing a successful business in one area, that's transferable into every other area. You Absolutely. Know, they're, they're universal yeah. concepts. Yeah. Um, yeah. Universal systems, you know, and, uh, the most, the most basic advice that I would give in terms of, um, you know, let's say someone was just, well, I don't want to reach out to anyone. I don't want mm -hmm. to talk to anyone. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to tell anyone what I'm going through. Um, create systems, create systems. The power of systems are huge. Yeah. And that the more and more and more that I'm in business, the more and more that I'm realizing the power of systems. Yeah. And if you ever want to scale up or grow, you need systems because there's yeah. only one Jordan, there's only one Paul. So, you know, ask yourself, what are things that we do well in the gym? Yes. And yeah. how would I communicate to someone else who wasn't me? Yeah. How to do that. That right makes a lot of sense. Start yeah. building your systems, you know, and um, another point, um, kind of, it's not going to be a, you know, direct try this or do this, but reading. Um, I'm just such a believer yeah, in reading sure. about business, yeah. reading about different types of business, and it just opens your mind. Yeah, you know, it for just, sure. It just allows you to step outside of your world and allows you to get mentorship from some of the greatest minds in the world. You know, That's so great advice. Amazing. Read. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's amazing the way you, when you read, you just get inspired. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And you yeah. get the patient approach where you're kind of really conge like, you know what, you can read something and I can read something. We get two different messages at times too, right? Interpretation. Exactly. But exactly. Can, you know, on this topic, can you, is there any book that, that you would recommend to a young entrepreneur that has helped you? Totally. Yeah, okay. totally. I am. Um, so I, I think that, I think that, um, I mean, Dale Carnegie is one guy who I think, oh, yeah. that, you know, yeah, yeah. every new entrepreneur, that should always be the first book you read. You know, uh, you've got think and grow rich. You've got, you know, um, um, how to, how to make friends and influence others, you know, um, so those two, you know, Think and Grow Rich is such an amazing, such an amazing book and Definitely. such an amazing um, demonstration just of the power of will and mindset too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think another book too that I think a book that's very important for especially martial arts business owners to read because I think that martial arts business owners, part of the problem that we have is we love martial arts too much. And yeah. we go into we go into the field, we go into martial arts business to make, to, to be able to do martial arts. Yeah. Right? But yeah. That like as a hobby almost, quickly, is that what you're saying? But that we quickly learn that when you're, when we're just relying on ourselves, yeah. you know, for example, when we're just relying on ourselves, we, it's easy to get very burnt out. And it's For easy sure. to yeah. hate what you do. And it's easy to yeah. lose that passion. So yeah. um, pretty much the book that I'm talking about is The E-Myth. Ah, I was waiting whole, for that one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and my so favorite. For me, that was, you yeah. know, all about yeah. 
a woman who goes into a pie yeah. making business because she loves baking pies. And sure enough, in two to three years, she absolutely yeah. hates baking pies, yeah. never wants to bake another pie yeah. in her life. And yeah. why is that? Because yeah. I've seen that amongst martial arts school owners. where You see it a lot, actually. Yep. In the yep. world. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then three, two, three years later, they hate martial arts. They want nothing to do with martial yep. arts. Yep. So that's a good one, the E-Myth. By Michael and E. Gerber. Then, um, Am I right? What's that? By Michael E. Gerber. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I read that one. It, is, is that, that's a different one than the, the E-Myth Revisited, or is that the second one? Um, I believe the E-Myth Revisited. I believe it's um, a newer edition where they also have some author notes on it. So it's pretty much the same then? Because that's the it's one I read. The same. Okay. Yeah, I would actually recommend the Revisited. The because Revisited, it's got okay. Some author notes and they kind of go back to it and stuff. Oh, I see. Uh, since it's a much older book. It yeah. was really good. And then, I really enjoyed um, it. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It helped me to understand then, the difference between an entrepreneur, a manager, and a technician. Do you remember? That was the, that, that they, exactly. they referenced that, right? Yeah. Exactly. And actually, it's funny because one thing that I, um, something that I experienced about three, four years ago is I actually had a revelation about three, four years ago where I thought I was a great business owner and I realized I was a horrible, great, I was a horrible business owner. And I was a great business operator. Ah, interesting. Now, can you define that? And yep, and that operations and management and being a business entrepreneur are totally different things. And I thought because, again, it's working in the business, in my opinion, compared to working on the business. Mm -hmm. So an incredible operator, which is what I was, is someone who knows how to truly maximize everything in the business mm. who's the best at working in the business but an entrepreneur is someone who specializes on working on the business on the business someone yeah who could step outside of the business and say well this system this system this system isn't good or mm -hmm. if you change this this these systems it's going to maximize your bottom line which will allow you to do a b and c mm -hmm. but that there's a totally different skill behind operating a business and working on a business on your business okay um, okay and then you've got your third skill of management and management mm -hmm. is dealing with people mm -hmm. right and management absolutely is um there's a book um there's a book that's uh in my head that i keep drawing a blank on about leadership um I'll get back to it. I'll get back <laughs> okay. to it. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, it really made me realize that I was um I was an incredible I I shouldn't say incredible, I was a very good um I was a very good operator, but I wasn't a good um entrepreneur. And I see. It forced me to learn. Um I really think the best way to gain your entrepreneurship skills is by speaking to other entrepreneurs. I really, yeah. really think that's the best way. Yeah. And that's what I really committed myself to the past three or four years is mm. uh, two, three, four, probably two or three years is really, really um, working on my entrepreneurial skills. That's and good. And yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's yeah. important. I mean, because, you know, just you understanding after running business for so long. So a lot of young entrepreneurs there can, can take this information and say, you know what, and really understand that what is a technician, as they say in the e-myth, what is a, a manager, an operator, right? And what is the entrepreneur's, uh, like, and how do I, you know, separate those three things in me? Because I'm a one-man show, let's say, you know, I've, I've, or one-woman show, and I'm doing everything myself. So when do I wear these different hats? Like, would you recommend them to, like, maybe compartmentalize? Or, um, like, how would they divvy up their time, you know, like, to focus on wearing those different hats? Like, how do you do that? Totally. That's for me, that's one of the toughest. Um, by the way, my, um, apparently my, uh, my headphones are low battery. So if they are, I'll just, uh, I'll go on. I'll take them no out worries. And go on to just, uh, yeah. No problem. Um, I, th that, I think we got to cut it soon most, anyway. Yeah, exactly. That's one of my, yeah. I can just talk forever. That's one of the no, most okay. difficult parts of that. And that's where in a small business, it's actually very tough because, you know, in the corporate world, you have, 
John, head of this, Joe, head of that, Jake, yeah. head of this, Robert, head of that. And yeah. you're so confined within your own box and only ever wearing one hat, but small business isn't that. And I find it, it's different for different people, you know, whether you tell yourself, okay, during these hours, I'm Jordan, the entrepreneur. During yeah. these hours, I'm Jordan, the operator. During okay. these hours, I'm Jordan, the manager, you know? Hey, Jordan, sorry, we had some technical difficulties there. Um, <laughs> okay. I bought, I bought new headphones right before the interview, and uh, I guess I didn't charge them enough. That's okay. That's okay. No problem. Um, I just wanted to get a chance to at least promote, you know, what you're doing and um, just end off with, you know, letting us know what you have planned for one more round this coming year. Um, totally. I know you have some things planned, so just please share with our audience. Totally. So I'll finish off before what I was just saying. I was saying, I think I was saying, so morning I've got my entrepreneurship hat on, you know, let's say 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we're, you know, having a team call, we're talking, you know, um, using our management skills, using our leadership skills, firing up the team for the day, you know, talking about our goals, maybe having a different theme of the day that we just talk about, um, you know, let's today talk about student retention, you know, yeah. let's today talk about, you know, how do we uh, deal with, you uh, student is struggling with a job. It could be anything, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That's my management portion. And then let's say the evening, I tell myself, okay, operations hat on, you know, prime time now, 5 p.m. to close. You know, I'm in the gym doing this, doing that. And if you're thinking, well, like, when do you get time for yourself and all that? Yeah. Welcome to the yeah. life of a business owner. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> of a small so business true. owner. Yeah. And that's yeah. also why it's important to develop these systems and to do this so that yeah. you can eventually can scale up and eventually yeah. don't need to spend your whole life in the business. Yeah. And eventually all these things that you're wearing multiple hats of, you're hiring out and you know, as the business grows, you don't need to be so involved, you know, yeah. as you are when you're, you know, 31 with no kids who's, you know, filled with piss and vinegar and you know, <laughs> so forth. Yeah. Um, Right. But um, yeah, in regards to um, our future, our future plans with the gym and with the brand, we've got we've got lots of plans. So we've actually um, part of revamping all the systems and writing out systems for absolutely everything that we do and investing in the systems um, came a franchise system that we've developed. Oh, wow. So we've actually okay. started to um, under the new brand, we've started franchising. So wow. we've got everyone knows um, our location in North York. We've got a location opening. It's ready to go. We're just waiting for the government to allow us to open it. So that's at 205 Marycrop. So that's, oh, wow. um, okay. it's, um, that's uh, in Woodbridge. Uh, okay. Really nice commercial plaza. There's a Copacabana in it. And yeah. we're actually right now um, just finishing some of the final arrangements about a... Um, um, another location in Midtown Toronto. Oh, wow. A third one yeah. already. That's amazing. Yes, that's exactly. Wow. So we're, we're really excited about it. And again, you know, when you can't work in the business, what do you do? You work on the business and you mm. do the best. Right? I see. And I see. Part of, um, part, of, um, part of one of the things that I've really learned over um, the last little bit as an entrepreneur is the power of reinvestment. And the mm. power of sustainable patient growth mm. that, you know, I really, really try to personify and really, really emphasize only living on the means that you need to live. You know, mm. all the money that you're making from the business, obviously, we've all got to live, but reinvest in it. You mm. know, this is your... This is your system. This is your little baby that you can need a nurture that's gonna gonna support you and feed you and help you for the rest of your life. That uh, makes so, so much sense. Yep. In it. Exactly. Yep. And um, you know, I know I know the stock market's hot right now and cryptocurrency <laughs> is hot right now and they're yeah. all hot topics right now. But yeah. business owners, invest in your own business. It's mm. no different. It's you know, the short term loss 
for a long-term gain, you know? So, Makes a lot um, of sense, yeah. yeah. So that's really what I'm personifying right now. Um, you know, I don't drive a car, but opening two new gyms. It's, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> that's a, making fun of me about that you know, the other day. You know what, that's, that's quite a statement. You just said right there, like, you're not driving a car, you're keeping your expenses low, but yeah, you're, you're on your way to opening, you know, your third gym actually, right? Yes. You know, that's awesome. That's amazing. And you know what? You're, you're a great person. A lot of people in the community talk really well about you. You're, you're always welcome, you know, and I'm sure other entrepreneurs can always reach out to you. I'm sure. Right. If they have, if they need any help. Right. Totally. Um, I would love that. And, and that's the thing is, you know, we, we've been ta talking a lot about systems today and working on your business. Um, that's where the extra gym, that's where the, the two new locations came. If yeah. I wasn't working on my systems throughout the pandemic, mm. I wouldn't have been able to dream of opening even just a second location. Wow, makes so much I sense. Used to be, I used to be cuffed to the gym. But yeah. now that we've established all the systems and developed our systems, yeah. and we've taken the time to you know, develop new staff and even not only systems of operation, but systems of training staff and systems mm -hmm. of, um, I'm now able to expand. And wow. I'm now able to, you know, um, scale up. Um, I, I really encourage anyone to reach out who um, would like to know more, needs any help, needs any advice, or even is potentially maybe interested in joining the franchise or interested in the bag. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right now, I, I, I really feel that over, you know, the past, you know, the past year in the pandemic and the past, you know, six years as a business owner and, 10 12 13 years operating the gym that i really do have a lot to give and for I sure i really yeah. want to um i really want to give back that at the end of the day um i didn't get into the muay thai and martial arts business to make money um i got into it because it's something that i love and mm. i love helping people through the martial arts that's amazing I now help martial arts business owners yeah. through some of the business and operational and management acumen that yep. I've learned over the past few years. Yeah. Um, I, I would truly love that. So guys, that would be amazing. Out, add me on Facebook. Yeah. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. I mean, just, just you as a person being out there, being a representative for entrepreneurs and for the martial arts community is amazing. I thank you from everyone and, like, it's amazing what you're doing. You know, I'm almost 20 years older than you, and I've learned so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for having the time. And, you know, hopefully we can have you on again in the future and just kind of recap and see where you're at maybe six months or a year from now, right? Thank you. know, because I see big things, and I wish you the best. Oh, thank you so much. And one thing that I do want to say about you is, um, you know, you, you, one of the best ways to learn is to mimic. And, you know, um, part of this and part of my openness towards all that and part of why I want to try to, you know, help other business owners so much is a lot of it's been through, um, through watching you and watching, oh. um, you know, watching your commitment from going from, you know, one of, um, you know, one of the top coaches that Canada has ever seen into, you know, um, the owner of, um, you know, one of the first, you know, really successful kickboxing gyms in Canada. Thank you. Um, you know, to um, now someone who's helping different businesses and different business owners through software and through consulting and through these podcasts. And yeah, um, thank you. You know, thank, thank you. you thank you. I appreciate that. Been following yeah. you in the community for quite a while. Even been oh, following thank you, you since. Since you knew who I was, you know, yeah. up to you that it really is, you've really led by example. Oh, and thank that, you. Um, I think that my openness in, um, in my approach and my willingness to help others is just, um, you know, something that I've learned through some great leaders in the industry. Yeah, and there's so many, right? There's so, there's so many. many. Yeah, 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 for but, sure. Um, I really do want to give you props and want to give you credit. Because, oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> you're the one behind the mic asking me all the questions, but you know, so much of this I've learned from you. So thank no, you. No, it works both ways. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And you know, have a great day and uh, yeah, we'll be in touch and wish you all the best, Jordan. Thanks again thank for you. joining us. Oh, thank you, Paul. Have yeah. A good one. Take care. Bye-bye. Awesome. Take care.